Well, this is video number six in our seven part series about how to teach math without a textbook. All the other videos are linked down below this video. And in video number two, I talked about three instructional practices that you should be doing in elementary math, number sense routines, story problems, and practice. Well, I'm Christina Tonneville, The Recovering Traditionalist, and I hope you stick around because in this video, we are going to dig into how to teach math through story problems in our quest to build our math minds so we can build the math minds of our students. Now, let me start off with a little bit about what teaching with story problems is not. It is not teaching kids steps and tricks to solve problems like cubes and keywords. Those things need to go away. It is not saving the story problem for the end of the lesson after the kids have done 20 bear problems just so kids get that real world connection. I'm a believer in using context or story problems to teach the mathematics. We don't add in the story problem at the end to help kids see a connection to it, we start with story problems to begin with. So you've probably heard me talk about it before, but I'm gonna bring it back around, cognitively guided instruction. It is what the teaching of mathematics with story problems should look like. Now, cognitively guided instruction is often referred to as CGI, the abbreviations. We love our acronyms in education, and this is just another one of them. But if you hear me refer to CGI, that's cognitively guided instruction. Now, the basic premise of CGI in, again, this is a summary a version of it, but the idea is that you give kids a problem in context without any instruction and you just let them solve it using their own intuitive understanding of the mathematics and you watch to see how they approach it. And then what they discovered is this progression that kids go through with their solution strategies for a addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And that progression is something you need to watch for as kids are solving the problems. And then you help guide them to more advanced solution strategies as you see that they are ready for it. But one of the things that is underlying cognitively guided instruction is this idea of the problem types. Now, I'm not gonna go too deep into it. I'll show a picture here of the CGI problem types for addition and subtraction. There's also one for multiplication and division, and you can find them very easily by Googling. I'll also probably link below to some of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite spots to find information about the problem types. But these problem types have kind of gotten um, used in the wrong way, I guess I should say, is that oftentimes we look at these problem types and we teach kids how to solve each of the different problem types. The idea of the problem types is to understand them for ourselves as teachers, because the type of problem that we give students will determine some of the solution strategy they use. There are kids who will solve problems in one problem type, and then you give them the exact same numbers in a different problem type, and they can't solve it. So if you wanna learn even more about cognitively guided instruction, I'll link to one of their research articles, and I'll link to the book uh, all, that details it out for you guys underneath this video. But I just wanna give you one quick example of why the story problem type makes a difference, okay? So let's use this example of Sierra has some money. She earns $17. Now she has $36. How much money did she begin with? To adults, that seems like we could pull out the numbers and subtract, which is why our textbooks will often put that kind of a story problem in a subtraction lesson. Because yes, you could take 36 and subtract 17 and get your answer, but that problem is not a subtraction problem to kids. To children, it's basically, she has some, so like you could put an X, you could put a, a circle there, whatever you wanna put. She has some, she got 17 more. So you add 17 and now you're at 36. To them, that is not a subtraction problem. They need to figure out what to add. What added to 17 gets them to 36. 
They're not seeing it as subtraction. And yes, later down the road, yeah, we want them to see all of those relationships and be able to use subtraction to solve it. But if we jump straight to, hey, just solve this with subtraction, this is where kids start to become what my friend Graham Fletcher calls number pluckers. They just start plucking out the, the numbers and trying to operate on them, thinking that it doesn't need to make sense. I just need to perform some kind of operation. So the premise of CGI is to really understand kids' solution strategies, give them problems based upon the problem types and where you think that they would be able to solve things, and then you watch to see how they're solving it. How are they intuitively thinking about that problem? Now, the other cool part about knowing the problem types is that once you know those problem types, you could really put in any numbers that you want. You can take Sierra's problem there that I just had, and you can replace it with some with decimals. You could even put fractions in there. You could even make it single digit, right? It just depends upon what your students are working on. You can totally use that same story problem, just replace the numbers to be something that's appropriate for your students at the time. Now, another key component to teaching with story problems in mathematics is really what I like to refer to as the missing piece. When I first learned about this stuff, I went back into my classroom and I would give kids a story problem, I'd let them solve it, and it didn't work out too well in the begin to begin with, but I would let them solve it, and then I would do what I would what I would consider the show and tell. So once they solved a problem, I would have kids come up and show and tell about the strategy that they used to solve the problem. Then they would go sit down. Another kid would come up and show and tell about their strategy. Another kid would show and tell. And then I would just end the lesson. But one of the key pieces to using story problems in your classroom is the discussion that needs to happen about the different solution strategies. Once you have kids share, the powerful piece is connecting those strategies. If, if kids are feeling, if you see kids kind of toning out, right, when kids are sharing their strategies, it's because they aren't con seeing the connectedness between it. So one of the jobs at, for us as teachers when we're teaching through story problems is yes, letting kids share, but then weaving the thread of connectedness, helping kids see how this strategy is similar to this strategy. How, how are they alike? How are they different? What do you see? And build relationships around solution strategies. Don't just do the show and tell. One of the best ways I ever learned to do this was from the book, The Five Practices. Now, I just call it The Five Practices, but it's The Five Practices for Orchestrating Productive Mathematical Discussions. And I'll link to that below this video as well. It walks you through how to make that time be the most productive that it can be. And it's such a powerful piece. And most of us are doing it incorrectly. I know I was. So that book really helped me out. But it's all about monitoring for certain solutions, picking the ones that you want to come up so that you can weave that connectedness for the students. Okay, the last piece here when you are trying to teach math with story problems is where do you get the tasks? So you can definitely create your own using the CGI problem types. If you Google that, you will see the charts and it will give you a framework basically to write your own. That's one of the most powerful ways to do it because you can write them using your kids, your students' names. You can write them using number sets that are appropriate for them. What kind of numbers should you have in there? And contexts that matter to your students. Every year there's a new fad coming around, video games, whatever it is that your students are interested in, write story problems using those contexts, okay? So create your own. The other thing is, it doesn't have to be story problems. Like we, the typical story problem frameworks, there are lots of cool ways that you can encompass this problem solving atmosphere in your classroom. One of my other favorites is through the use of three act math tasks. Now Graham Fletcher is one of the leading experts in that for elementary school. Uh, upper grades, Dan Meyer was one of the first people to get started in that for junior high and high school. But I'll link to Graham's site where he lists all of his three act math tasks that you can use with elementary students. Now, the last thing I'm going to link to underneath this video is how to modify your textbook. One of my favorite videos that got me started in this was Dan Meyer's TED Talk about how class, the math classroom needs a makeover. And he talks about how he modifies a high school textbook, but 
I that gave me so many ideas about how to mo modify textbooks in the elementary and middle school as well. So all of those will be linked below this video. And I also want to remind you that there is a guide that I have available for teaching math without a textbook that I would love for you to go check out that you can get your hands on and it talks you through all of the this whole video series. And don't forget the rest of the videos are linked below this video. But I hope that this video has built your mind around how to teach mathematics through story problems because they are one of the best ways to build your students' math minds. Have a great day.